Teaching Intellectual Diversity in the Shadow of SB83. I'm Adrienne Goslin, Associate Professor in the Departments of English and Africana Studies at Cleveland State University, and here's what you need to know. English 348 is a writing across the curriculum course at Cleveland State University that studies multicultural literature. In the spring 2023 semester, the topic of the course was the multicultural short story. Specifically, what happens when writers infuse cultural and ideological differences into a definitive narrative genre? What difference does culture make? Students would combine close reading and structural analysis to examine how writers infuse cultural experience into the genre. While lecture and student-led facilitated discussions would examine the ways in which the representative works not only master the form, but also the way the authors impart cultural perspectives to the reader. Once we reviewed the formal elements of the short story, plot, setting, character, conflict, theme, we reviewed the history of the genre. We acknowledged its American ancestors, Washington Irving, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and of course, Edgar Allan Poe. We discussed the growth of the short story and its development by the end of the 19th century as the result of the rise in magazines and the increase in both black and white publishing houses. We read stories by Cleveland writer Charles Chesnut to study the fundamentals of satire. One of the oldest forms of literature in classical Greece, satire was a narrative strategy used to educate and inform. Chesnut, a self-taught scholar of classical Western literature, was well acquainted with the form and used it to critique slavery and post-reconstruction politics. We studied The Conjure Woman, Chesnut's first collection of short stories, as a parody responding to Joel Chandler Harris's popular Uncle Remus plantation stories. We noted the ways that Chesnut's stories not only challenged the white stereotype of the happy slave, but also rendered the psychological vulnerabilities faced by enslaved people. We read stories from the wife of his youth to deconstruct his use of juxtaposition to satirize the newly enacted one drop law as the result of Plessy versus Ferguson, and his use of irony in the Groveland stories, a fictitious city based on Cleveland, to warn against issues of pigmentocracy threatening the newly emerging black middle class. Returning from spring break, we prepared to tackle the big question. What is cultural about the multicultural short story? What difference, if any, does reading culture make? Instead of formal analysis, we asked new questions. Does the story turn on one central cultural icon or more than one? How do cultural aspects function as narrative strategy? How and what types of satire did the author use? Does a focus on the cultural icon make a difference to what the story means to the reader? The students agreed that if satire depends on understanding what is being satirized, their task as critical readers would be to gain knowledge of the objects being satirized and to consider that role in the narrative. Rather than analyzing the stories in terms of formal structure, plot, theme, conflict, our inquiry centered on the cultural icons referenced in the narrative. Developing methodology shifted the way students approached the stories. And students found that the shift in perspective produced 
a different learning experience. And then SB 83 was introduced in the Ohio Senate. SB 83, the Ohio Higher Education Enhancement Act, is a proposed legislation that has the potential to dramatically change how students learn and how professors teach at Ohio's public colleges for years to come. Of particular concern, was section 3345.0217, which includes mandates that would create parameters around controversial matters such as slavery. The bill prompted discussion in our class, passionate discussion in our class. The students were already aware of how tightly curriculum is controlled in Cleveland Public Schools, and the idea that such restrictions were being proposed for higher education and public universities such as Cleveland State was disturbing. They questioned the impact of such legislation on classes like English 207, which was clearly designed to promote intellectual diversity. Now there were new questions. What if platforms expanding knowledge on controversial matters such as slavery were no longer accessible? What if classes that sought to teach such new knowledge were silenced? All the students recognized the threat that such legislation would pose to curriculum that wanted to include writers such as Charles Chesnut who used satire to engender his moral revolution. Three students selected to undertake a research-based multimodal project that focused on Chesnut's story, The Passing of Grandison. And the story is about a slave who escapes his freedom in order to return to the South and free his enslaved family. The students' interdisciplinary research examined the story in multiple contexts, drawing on the history of Reconstruction, post-Reconstruction, the Daughters of the Confederacy, issues of censorship, as well as formal literary analysis. Their findings became part of the CSU Student Digital Showcase an event designed to connect classroom activity with the public arena. The product and their presentations reflected their own process of learning, as well as their potential to affect learning in others. The digital showcase was a wonderful learning experience for me, one student wrote. I was able to connect the passing of Grandison to modern works and events and get other students involved in the literary world. I enjoyed working with my classmates to create a presentation that explained just how vital it is to protect our right to read and to learn about black, indigenous, and other people of color. In the meantime, Back in class, students continue to explore what is cultural about the multicultural short story. They tested their hypotheses, they applied their theories, they practiced methodologies, and they shared their findings. By the end of the semester, the students reported that Approaching the narratives with a focus on culture and cultural references and cultural icons produced a learning experience that, among other things, engaged exploration of deeper, more in-depth reading, expanded an understanding beyond conventional interpretation, and increased awareness of the educational potential available through cultural icons. 
All the while, the idea of intellectual diversity continues to draw comments and speculative definitions across the state and across the country. The last day of class, my students offered their own definitions, which I share here. I'd like to call attention to a couple of passages. The first, that having the intelligence and willingness to listen to a broad spectrum of views without biased judgment. Even when those views and new ways of thinking are unexpected, uncomfortable, and don't fit the standard Eurocentric viewpoints that so many of us have been taught from childhood. Another notes, without intellectual diversity in the academic sense, it would be nearly impossible for citizens to grasp how and why our society has evolved as it has with the problems it has perpetuated. And another sees the role of higher education as providing a space that fosters intellectual diversity where all people can participate in the conversation. As we wait for the legislative shoe to drop, let's hope Ohio senators, representatives in the State House will agree. Thank you.